Hello again, you sick, twisted weather freaks, and welcome to a, another fun-filled, action-packed, and intellectually stimulating edition of This Week in Weather. I'm your host and meteorologist, a DT from Weather Risk, your captain of chaos, your colonel of confusion, your commander of catastrophe. Let's talk about This Week in Weather, and we're going to have a special focus about Memorial Day weekend, because it's time to focus on that. Also, because Memorial Day weekend is early this year, as you probably know, you looked at the calendar, I'm sure you've already seen it. So uh, this is a perfect time to spend a little bit of talking about this week in weather and the overall wet weather pattern. So this here is the website. And of course, uh, you go to our shop page. Here you see all sorts of great products like the uh, uh, Mid-Atlantic forecast here for only $35 a month. Uh, you get Mid-Atlantic in Delaware, Maryland, West Virginia, North Carolina, Virginia, broken up into 12 zones. You get the forecast and information and week two and some maps. $35 a month, very useful product. People use it. Uh, gardeners, landscapers, uh, vineyards, house painters, everybody uses it. I know some people that do some road paving that also use it as well, some of my clients. So very popular, very inexpensive product as well. And also we do our Weather Traders Edge for our grain and for our commodity clients all around the world. This here is in fact the Weather Risk Grains uh, Twitter page, uh, or X as they call it now, but I always call it Twitter and I always will. Uh, so Weather Risk Grains here. And then this here is the one on Blue Sky as well. And that's for operational weather. All right, let's take a look at the sea surface temperature map here. Now, this is May 7th. Let me change that because this is the new one, May uh, 15th. And what I want to point out here is that the cold water temp continues uh, here in the west coast of North America. Very, very large pool of cold water here. It looks like it's pushing southward in towards the Enso region. Uh, so, but so far, the numbers aren't really dropping much, but um, it's definitely having an impact here. This is a huge negative pool, uh, negative anomaly, cold water, sea surface temperature anomalies, uh, the negative PMM, Pacific Meridional Mode. We talked about that before. And that as it is one of the reasons why the West Coast trough was so active and bringing these big systems into California and the Rockies. And uh, that's going to be an issue. As we go late into the spring, this can often act like a La Nina and cause a hot dry pattern in the plains of the Midwest. But we'll see if that actually happens. And it will also influence the hurricane season. Now, on the Atlantic, again, the tropical Atlantic remains quite chilly relative to normal for the middle of May. Uh, it's been a long time since we've seen the eastern Atlantic this cold. Um, but uh, the northeast Atlantic off of Spain and Iceland and Ireland, Great Britain, quite warm. And they've had a, a very persistent huge ridge or dome of high pressure, a mega ridge, a rex block, for several weeks in northwest Europe because of this pool of very warm water here. In the Western Pacific, you have your pool of warm water here, uh, staying, stay, extending from China out to the Central Pacific. And this is just to show you the anomalies over the last uh, uh, seven days. Again, this is some tropical tidbits. I'm sure many of you already seen this. But as you can see, the waters remain are still dropping. They're not really warming up. We're having a lot of cold water going on here. Uh, look at the cold water here in the Atlantic. It's uh, quite impressive. Uh, we're not seeing a lot of warming anywhere in the Pacific or the Enso region at all, the Eastern Pacific, um, and the Central and Eastern Atlantic, the subtropical region is also pretty chilly. Very interesting. Haven't seen that in a long time. All right, this here was the upper iron map a couple days ago. And you can see this was, this giant upper low came in from the West Coast last week as a giant upper low. And it moved uh, to the West Coast, to the East Coast, and then it separated, and then it, was, it drifted in the Great Lakes, last week dropped down to the gulf of mexico and then it came back north and bought the rain for the last couple of days so this feature has been around for about a week it's a long it's a slow moving very persistent large upper low here's another one big massive trough coming in normally you don't see troughs like this in the middle of may dropping down to california nevada all right and then to the north you have this huge block over uh the great lakes and uh, ontario and quebec and new england so and if you look at the rainfall map you'll see that the rain never got to new england so that's the upper low that brought the heavy rain in your last couple of days. This was the rainfall last 72 hours, ending as a Thursday. The models did a great job forecasting the heavy rain. As you can see, there were areas in the Blue Ridge of the northern Shenandoah Valley, which had up to five or six inch rains. That's what the brown colors here mean. Uh, and then you call up other areas uh, 
Richmond on two or three inches just to the east, a band of three inch rains up to DC. And then again, down by Roanoke, over three inches on the southern end of the Blue Ridge down here. So it was a lot of water graphic lifting. Now notice, like we forecast, all the heavy rain was essential, the super heavy rain, south of the Pennsylvania Turnpike that did get, did get two or three inches in Philly and South Jersey, where they really, really need it. Uh, but northern Pennsylvania, western Pennsylvania, the rainfall really dropped off here. To show you also, look at New England. Rain fell apart. As soon as it moved up into the ridge, it was done. That was it, not going anywhere. And then also we had a little bit of rain in Ohio and Indiana from a little wraparound rain in there over the last couple of days. Not nearly as much, but important rain nonetheless for our agricultural interests and concerns in the uh, Indiana, Ohio, also known as the Eastern Corn Belt areas. Okay, so uh, this is the upper air map here as of May 15th. Now we have this huge giant upper blow trough. Another one, yes, yes, another one. Uh, this is the one here from May 13th. All right, it moved very slowly because this feature had to get out of the way for us in the block. Okay, so that's where it was on May 13th. There it is on May 15th. It's only moved into the western portions of South Dakota and the Dakotas. The deep trough on the west coast is huge, extending from British Columbia down to Baja, northern Mexico, and the block is in place across eastern Canada. Okay, and then we have the upper low, wide Labrador, and the, and the Greenland block to the north of that. So very interesting pattern here. Giant ridge in the central Pacific where the water temperature is here pretty warm. But you can see this is the cold water here, and that's where your trough is, being, is persistently, persistently developing and setting up here. So this giant upper low created some really interesting weather here. You can see this was the system as of a Thursday morning uh, in uh, Minnesota and the Dakotas, and the heavy rain in the western portions of the Dakotas into southern Saskatchewan. Already one to three inch rains had fallen as of this morning and more rain fell during the day today. Now this upper lows, this giant system is gonna move through the Great Lakes and direct the cold front into the eastern US here over the next couple of days. And you can see that here um, very nicely. And there's the cold front, it advances now. By Saturday, the upper low, which was in the Dakotas, let me blow this map up a little bit as you can see it, um, is now in Michigan. And, but again, look at the energy coming in from the, from the Pacific. This is just not stopping, quite impressive. New energy coming down from the Gulf of Alaska all the way down the Pacific, dropping into Baja California, Northwest Mexico, all right? And these, these are different pieces of energy here gonna form a giant new long wave trough in the future. But in the meantime, this upper low in the Great Lakes drags the cold front through, and this is now for uh, Saturday, uh, yeah, Saturday morning, and the cold front will be advancing towards the East Coast on Saturday evening. Um, so look for that. Um, but a pretty good rain here on Saturday morning in the Ohio Valley, Tennessee Valley. And then the, it will arrive Saturday night on the East Coast with some showers and thunderstorms. All right. Now, as we go into next week here, remember we talked about this giant trough here on the West Coast? Well, okay, here it comes. Boom! A gigantic upper low forms again, again in the central Rockies and the Great Basin, right? Look at the huge block in Greenland and Northern Canada. This a giant upper low is gonna be a major weather producer for the plains in the Midwest. This is gonna be a big storm for those guys. This is Monday, May 19th, May 2021. It goes from Colorado to Iowa. It takes two days to crawl across the country because of the strong blocking in Canada and because of this giant upper low off New England. Very slow moving system. And there it is, May 19 on the left, 20 and 21, moving very slowly across. Now, this is great weather for the East Coast and for New England, okay, in the southeastern states, but for the Plains and the uh, upper Midwest and the Great Lakes, this is going to be a big deal and bring a lot of severe weather. All right, that's May 20th. This is 22nd and 23rd. Now, because of the blocking here, this low and the surface low, let me blow up this map here a little bit, is going to be forced to stay to the south, not go to the Great Lakes because of the block. You see the block there? So this low cannot go to Minnesota. It's going to turn due east right across uh, Interstate 70, let's say. And that's going to force this low to track from Iowa and Missouri towards southern Indiana, Kentucky, and Virginia. Here it comes, May 22nd, May 23rd, May 24th. May 22nd, you can see the primary low is already dying in, in the Ohio Valley, a new low is forming on the Virginia-North Carolina border. There's the big rain developing here in the Mid-Atlantic, and then the consolidates into a big system as a nor'easter, if you can believe this, for late May, going into Memorial Day weekend. That's 
Friday, May 23rd, you have a very intense low, Cape Cod, Massachusetts, heavy rain in New England. The rain is ended in the Atlantic at that point, and high pressure coming down from the Great Lakes, cool high pressure. So the start of the weekend looks great. West of the Appalachians in the Ohio Valley on May 23rd, the beginning of the Memorial Day weekend, all the middle Mississippi Valley, the deep south. But this is a cool Canadian high. Temperatures are not going to be warm. All right? For the week, look, here's the rain for the next seven days on the European. Look at the rain in the Midwest, west of the mountains here, west of the Appalachians. Wow, that's a, that's a stormy pattern. That's a lot of rain here. Uh, again, the dark red area is three inches. The brown color is five or six inch rains in some of those blobs there in Indiana and Southern Illinois and Ohio and Tennessee and Missouri. Impressive rain. Here's the GFS. Same general idea, not quite the same thing. The little difference here, the European has more rain than Southern Minnesota, Wisconsin and Southern Michigan than the GFS, but you can see it's the same general idea. Okay, now let's take a look at Memorial Day weekend. So this is the upper air map for Friday evening. May 23rd. Now you look at this map and you go, wow, that sucks. And to start the weekend off, it doesn't look great. So you have this giant upper low and the big trough on the East Coast, a huge block to the north. Okay, if this was the middle of winter, wow, but it's not. Okay, so that's the start of the pattern. Now, uh, and then we can see how this reflects the temperatures. So the image on the left, these are mid temperatures for Saturday morning. Okay, so you can see that we have 40s here. Let's see if I can pull this one up for you a little bit. You can see it. We have 40s here uh, Saturday morning in New England. That's pretty chilly, okay, May 24th. 50s in Virginia, North Carolina, Tennessee, northern Alabama, Mississippi, Georgia. Mid and upper 50s on May 24th. Look at the Ohio Valley, look, mid 40s. Great Lakes, low 40s. That's pretty chilly. Okay, so that's the min temperatures. What about the max temperatures? for Saturday afternoon. Uh, Gulf Coast, 60s and 70s, 70s is fine. Low 70s in the Ohio Valley. Uh, New England, New York State, underneath the cloud cover, or uh, getting occasional showers in upstate Pennsylvania and New York, they're still around 50 degrees, pretty chilly, okay? Uh, the uh, Western Maryland, Greenbrier Valley is pretty chilly. We're in the 60s, Virginia, Maryland, Pennsylvania, around 60, New York and Philly. So kind of chilly to start things off. This is Sunday, all right? This is May 25. So here we go. Look at those mid temperatures again. Look at this. Wow, pretty chilly. A little couple degrees warmer, but it's still. Look at Pennsylvania, the mountains, New York State, interior New England. Down in the 40s, uh, really chilly. Eastern Great Lakes in, the, in there. Same thing in the Appalachian Mountains, all the way down into Asheville and to eastern Tennessee, right? And then max temperatures on Sunday afternoon, uh, not bad, getting there. We're getting in low 60s now in New England. Okay, get a little more sun. The mountains still staying in the 50s. Great Lakes, 70s, Ohio Valley, low to, uh, mid to upper 70s in some places. The deep south, getting close to 80 degrees. Again, getting more, back to normal where it should be. And then for uh, Monday, uh, the mid temperature is again on the cool side, but not as cool as you can see. And then we go for uh, the max temperatures here. Let me. Um, Send this backwards, bring this forward. And again, this is Monday max temperatures. Things a little better. Now we're in mid, low to mid 70s, uh, mid-Atlantic, uh, 50s, upper 50s, low to mid 60s in Pennsylvania, New York, New England, not bad. Near 80 degrees in the Great Lakes and the Ohio Valley, low to mid 80s, even if maybe some 90s on the Gulf Coast here, and then 80s in the Deep South. So Monday Memorial Day looks okay. So even though this looks kind of scary, this upper air map, um, this upper low is now in Maine by Monday, and you have a northwest flow, but you're getting sinking drying air and high pressures coming down, and you're looking okay. So Sunday and Monday look pretty darn good. Temperatures on the cool side, and, but in getting warmer. So doesn't look as bad as it earlier looked. So that's the good news here. Now this is for May 28th, and you can see that the energy, the blocking remains very strong in Canada. Look at that monster block, wow. Well, we still have an upper low in New England, uh, we have a nice disturbance here in the coming through the Midwest of the Plain States. Uh, shortwave energy here is going to bring some rain. And then another gigantic upper low and trough coming in in almost June 1st in the West Coast. You don't see stuff like this. Um, and then the rainfall. Now, we, with this sort of Northwest flow uh, coming in like this, you don't get a lot of rain. And sure enough, for the week two, the GFS is not a lot of rain here. And the European also not a lot of rain. 
for most of the eastern half of the country. Right? Now, the New England, it's a little deceptive, New York State and New England, because most of that rain occurs uh, early in the week. And then also with this little upper air disturbance here in the middle of the week, uh, upper low coming in, giving some showers there to northern New York State and northern New England. But overall, not a lot of rain week two. And finally, I want to point this out to you. This here is uh, the week three forecast, just to give an idea of what's coming in. So here's our main jet stream. Right, right, the big thick black arrow. Then it splits. We have a nice ridge in Western Canada. So it goes over the ridge, coming down. We have a nice trough on the East Coast, another trough on the West Coast, and a nice ridge over the Rockies and the Plains. So you're getting Northwest flow here. This is a fairly dry pattern. No heat. This takes us to early June. There's no heat here east of the Mississippi River at all to speak of. And a fairly dry pattern. So that's the good news. And just one other thing I want to point out here. The MJO for the next 30 days, again, as you can see, the European GFS, it keeps it essentially stuck in the neutral circle, which means we're not getting anything to cause the large scale global weekly patterns to change. So what we, what we see is what we get, which means more of these active weather patterns, more storminess for the Midwest. Uh, not, no real heat coming up for the Eastern United States that I can see. Now this takes us to the middle of June, um, so it's only two weeks, but we'll see how things change. I'm hoping at some point the MGO wakes up, but it might not. It might stay asleep all the way full June. So we'll see. All right, this is meteorologist at DT from Weather Risk. Um, I will see you over on the Weather Risk uh, website, the Facebook page, and then over on the Blue Sky page. Uh, and I'll catch you next time, probably next Wednesday or Thursday for the next update.